Hi everyone, today we're going to have a look at a bit of theory and we're going to learn how loop and ring selections work in Cinema 4D. Learning what I'm about to tell you really changed the way I look at my own meshes and it helped me to analyze and read my own meshes. And it also helped me to see why certain loop or ring selections are working while other selections are not working at all. If you want to, you can download the file I'm working with in this tutorial. I've provided a download link in the video description and you can see I've prepared some geometry here and I've also got some Motex in here and two cameras. First of all, we're going to have a look at edge loops. I'm going to switch to my other camera here and switch on this Motex. Now, by definition, an edge loop is a selection of continuous edges that pass straight through four-way intersections. And what that means is that the edges run through points or vertices that have four connected edges. Now, if you select your move tool and go to edge mode, and if you double click on one of these edges, you will select a loop here, or we can select a loop here. And this is exactly what the definition says. Each of these points or each of these edges along this line here run through points that are connected to four edges. If you double click on one of the border edges down here, for example, you will also get a loop. And this is a bit weird because this is not what the definition says. Down here we have edges that run through points that are only attached to three edges. Now, why is that? The reason for that is because Edge loops on borders of flat objects work a little bit differently. Edge loops on borders of flat objects will work if the vertices are attached to three edges instead of four. And that's why we're getting a loop down here. And this loop stops on the corners. And the reason for that is because the corner points are only connected to two edges. And if you take a look at a three-dimensional object, you will see that edge loops work according to the original definition. If I double click on one of these edges here, I will get a loop because the edges run through points that are attached to four edges here. And the loop will stop on the corners because the points on the corners are connected to only three edges. And basically that is a pole. We're going to talk about poles a little bit later too. But as far as edge loops on borders of flat objects are concerned, these loops will work if the points are connected to three edges. And if you need to continue this loop around that corner, you would have to change the topology. And you could do that by welding these points here, for example. And now we have edges here on that corner that run through a point that is attached to three edges. Which means that if I double click on one of these edges, the loop will be continued and it will stop at this corner up here. And the reason it stops up here is because the point up here only is attached to two edges. I'll just undo this. Next, we're going to have a look at ring selections for edges. An edge ring is a selection of edges that are not connected but opposite each other. And what that means is that an edge selection runs along a path that is defined by opposite edges. So if I grab my ring selection tool, I can make a selection like this or a selection like this. And the reason I can do that is because I have a path of opposite edges here. And again, if I need to be able to make a different ring selection, I would again have to change the topology, for example, by welding some points like we did before. And if I go back to edge mode and use my ring selection, I am now getting a selection like this. And like before, we now have a path of opposite edges. It's just going in a different direction. Now let's have a look at polygon loops. Polygon loops are very similar to edge ring selections and a polygon loop is a selection of continuous polygons and this selection travels along a path that is defined by opposite edges. So if I grab my ring selection tool or my loop selection tool, doesn't really matter in this case, 
I can make a selection like this or a selection like this. And again, I can make this selection because these polygons travel along a path defined by opposite edges. Now let's have a look at why these selections are even working. The main reason why these are working is because we have quad topology, which means we only have four-sided polygons here. And the reason these uh, selections are working with quads is because a four-sided polygon is 100% unambiguous. It has two opposite edges that go in one direction and it has two opposite edges going in the other direction. So if I select one of these polygons, hold down control and click on edges to turn this into an edge selection, you can see we have these four edges and we have two edges opposite each other that go in this direction and we have two edges opposite each other that go in the other direction. And what that means is that the edge flow and the selection of loops is both predictable and controllable. And that's one of the big differences between quad meshes and meshes that have triangles or engons. So let's go and have a look at what happens if we have triangles or engons in our mesh. I'll just make this invisible and I've also prepared more geometry here. This is the example for triangles. Now, when you have triangles or engons in your mesh, you will find that your loops may not work at all, or if they do work, in many cases, they are not predictable and they cannot be controlled. And the reason for that is because a triangle doesn't have opposite edges and an engon, on the other hand, has multiple opposite edges. Now, here we have this mesh that has this triangle here. If I go to a polygon mode and grab my loop selection tool, uh, you can see I can make loop selections like this. Even this one is working, although we have this triangle here. But if I try to make a loop selection here, something like this happens. So these loops here are predictable because we have these polygons running along a path of opposite edges. Whereas here we have this triangle and the loop will not be predictable and we cannot control the flow of this loop. And the same is true for meshes that have engons, like this one. If I try and make a loop selection here, you can never tell where this loop is coming out at the other end because this engon has a number of opposite edges. So especially when working with subdivision surfaces, it's quite important that you keep quads as much as possible in order to keep everything controllable and predictable. The next thing we're going to have a look at is poles. So here you can see a mesh where we have a number of poles. Let's have a look at what poles are. A pole is a point that has less than four connected edges or a point that has more than four edges attached to it. And if you take a look at the geometry here, you can see that here, for example, we have a point that is connected to five edges. Over here, we have one that is only connected to three edges. So these are two examples of poles. And you can see here in the definition that edge loops will stop at a pole. So if I grab my move tool and double click on this edge here, you can see it only goes all the way to here because here it hits a point that is attached to five edges and Cinema 4D doesn't know how to continue this loop. And the same is true over here. We can select the loop up to this point that is only connected to three edges. And here on the outside, the loop will work because what we've learned earlier is that edge selections on the borders of flat objects will work if the points are attached to three edges, which they are. And that is why we're getting this loop here. Poles in many cases cannot really be avoided. But the good news is that as such, poles are not bad topology. One thing to look out for is that poles should be avoided on curved areas of an object. And the reason for that is because they will not work well under subdivision. And if you have poles on curved surfaces and uh, subdivide those objects, you will get lumps and bumps in the geometry. So if you do need certain details on curved surfaces, you will probably want to try to avoid poles. And if that's not possible, to either add more geometry 
which will often help to alleviate the effect of lumps and bumps. Or another way of solving that problem is to try and move that pole away from the curved area. One more thing I would like to mention is the importance of a good edge flow. And good edge flow has a lot of advantages and it is important because it makes adding details or editing the mesh easier. It is easier to control a mesh, it allows for better deformation and it improves shading. However, your edge flow will always depend on what you actually need and the details you actually need. For example, if I make a loop selection like this, it may be necessary to have the edges flowing like this, but it will also mean that if you subdivide this object, the corner up here will be a lot rounder than the one down here, where we have different edge flow. And while we cannot continue the loop around this corner, we can be sure that this edge will be a lot sharper. And of course, we could also make this edge sharper, but we would have to add more geometry. Also, it is not important to always have loops or working loops everywhere. When you do character modeling, it is pretty important, for example, that the edges or the, the edges flow along the muscle structure of a character or a creature. And the reason for that is because if you want to animate that character, it is important that the mesh can deform properly and you only get proper deformation if you have the edge flow to support that deformation. Edge flow can also be important with hard surface modeling, no matter if you use subdivisions or not. And I'll give you a quick example that may be helpful. So let's suppose I want to add a square hole here and I'll just switch out of that camera. Of course, the easiest way to do that would be to just extrude these polygons back and now you have the hole that you want in there. However, you can't really select the loop on the outside here. Of course, there's the Cinema 4D selection tools that will help you make certain selections uh, that you can't make by just double clicking on the edges here. But for a detail like this, it might be useful to have the edge flow to support loop selections. And that's one of the reasons why I often try to keep the details I want to create contained within their own polygon islands. And that means that in order to create that hole, I would not just extrude these polygons back, but use extrude inner first. And now I can extrude these polygons back and I have the edge flow to support that loop and I can bevel these edges and it just makes it easier to select these edges here. Also, let's say I want to make a round corner here. I could bevel this edge and maybe use a couple of subdivisions, limit that bevel. Let's go ahead and remove this end on here. Creating these polygon islands for your details also makes it possible to prevent edges from propagating through the rest of the mesh. Now this is just meant to be a hard surface model. So we have these triangles here. Some people don't like that, but for hard surface modeling, that is something that is okay with me simply because I don't have to move all of these edges here to the rest of the mesh. And I still have the edge flow here to support my loops. Down here it's not working because we have an n-gon and we've already learned that an n-gon has multiple opposite edges so edge loops are not supported here. And if we needed to make a loop selection here and have the edge flow to support loop selections you know, we would probably have to we would have to do something like this for example select these polygons and use extrude inner and now we have the topology to support a loop selection here. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. It is certainly not complete and not all of it may be 100% correct. I'm still learning all of that stuff myself, but I do hope that this tutorial shed some light on how loop and ring selections work in Cinema 4D. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon.